dear brethren and sisteren, which way do the needle point today, I wonder? Hmm? Which way do the needle point today, I wonder? Hmm? Have or have not? Hmm? Have or have not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But if it was the forest fire index that I was talking about, there would be a little man from Lands and Resources who goes out every day to put the needle in the appropriate position. But I'm not talking about the forest fire index, am I? No, I am talking about whether on any given day you can say that the province of Newfoundland and Labrador and its inhabitants are have or have not. And so far as I know, no such index exists. <laughs> but it is my position, my postulation, if you will, that if you truly want to know whether on any given day that the population of Newfoundland and Labrador is have or have not, you need only look into their faces, the faces of the average Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, to see how happy they are. For is this not the happy province, Newfoundland and Labrador? The happy but have not province, Newfoundland and Labrador. Hmm? Eh? I mean, didn't we invent that somewhere? Didn't we come up with happiness? Eh? Hmm? I mean, we wrote that on our license plate, the happy province, Newfoundland and Labrador. As far as I know, happiness was not a state of being that existed before we come up with happiness. I mean, twerk the British to come up with happiness? I don't think so. <laughs> twerk the Russians? Not likely. Twerk the French or the Germans? I don't think so. They wouldn't be happy if they had Red Skelt and poked up their arses. <laughs> no, it was Newfoundland and Labrador, the happy province, the happy but have not province. I mean, was BC the happy province? <laughs> if 300 days of rain makes you happy, I suppose. <laughs> Alberta. Alberta, the happy province. <laughs> if having Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to do all your work for you makes you happy. <laughs> Ontario, Ontario, <laughs> oh, give me a break. They got an allergy to happiness that makes them break out and go on strike in Ottawa. <laughs> Quebec, 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 Quebec. I suppose if you can buy it under the table for cash. No, it was Newfoundland and Labrador, the happy province. And what made us so happy, I wonder? Eh? Hmm? Eh? What made us so gosh darn happy all the time? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'll tell you what made us happy all the time. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. We come from nothing. We were nothing. We were going nowhere, and boy, we loved it. <laughs> we wouldn't let anything interfere with our happiness. What? Shortage of jobs, perfect, let's party. <laughs> A downturn in the economy. Well, ads, let's go up in the woods to the camp. <laughs> Quebec skinning us over Churchill Falls. Let's get drunk in French immersion class. <laughs> it was some good, wouldn't it? Well, we was happy, and I have not. And we loved it. But what happened to change all that, I wonder? What happened to change all that? I'll tell you what happened to change all that. In the ten years that Mr. Danny Williams was premier over this fair kingdom, he sent out a little feller from head office who put the needle over on half. <laughs> and what's wrong with being half, I wonder? Hmm? What's wrong with being half? I mean, don't we all want to be rich? Don't we all want to be like Donald Trump and Conrad Black and, and Danny himself? Huh? Hmm? I don't know. I mean, what is the look of happiness? Is Donald Trump the look of happiness? 
or have he been sucking on lemons all his life? <laughs> Conrad Black, if that ever smiles, he's going to split apart like a birch junk and fall down in two pieces. And Danny himself, he tries to smile. And the corners of his mouth works towards the tops of his ears, but his ears are so low down on his head that it looks like this. <laughs> but need I point out, need I point out, that it was Danny Williams who showed us our chiefest problem as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. He said that we have a mind-crippling population-wide disease of epidemic proportions in Newfoundland called apioitis. A disease that makes us think everything is rosy when in fact it's exactly the opposite. And boy, we had it by the dump truck load, every last one of us. <laughs> and he put us on the road to recovery. Thank God he spotted it because he had us sucked up into the oil pipe of prosperity and shot out into the sulfurous pit on the far side, ready for refinement, and what progress we have made. <laughs> yes, our youngsters used to have to go off to Alberta to get rich in three years. Now they can do that at home. Hmm? And we hate Alberta anyway. Hey, now we're transferring money to Ontario, because they are have not, and we are have. And we hate Ontario anyway. <laughs> hey, boy. And we are developing our resources with Quebec. And we hate Quebec. Hey, boy. And we're Canada's newest half problems. And we hate Canada. Hey, boy. And the world is coming to us for our resources. And we hate the world. We can hate now. We can hate everything. Because we are cured of apiitis and what odds? Look at us now, a covetous lot of greedy, larcenous, lecherous layabouts with too much money to spend on TV, internet, lottery, and booze, and nothing to keep our youngsters busy with except swiping and smoking and driving ATVs all over hell's half acre. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> but wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not half after all. As of Danny's departure, in fact, he left one little unpieced, unfinished piece of business on his desk called Muskrat Falls. Oh, what's that, I wonder? Well, it looks like we, it looks like we collectively borrowed $7.6 billion to take hydroelectricity out of Labrador and send it down to Nova Scotia. <laughs> Oh, $15,500 for every man, woman, and child in the province. Yes, we are in debt again, saved on one hand and sunk on the other. Hallelujah. That is the stroke of genius. <laughs> yes, what a master stroke it was. Oh, now we can truly live up to the images we portray of ourselves on those Newfoundland tourism ads, eh? Disenfranchised. Irish fisher folk, a diddly dum dumming through the goody bushes on the bald Avalon with no more care than a pink, white, and green flapping in a drizzly breeze. <laughs> yes, and it's all in that towny flag, isn't it? Yes, the pink, the white, and the green, our ancestry, are the only two prongs of it that the designer had in his mind 200 years ago when he designed it. Yes, sir. Yeah. There was the pink. St. Andrew's red faded on those little banners that they used to stick in the wood piles. Eh? There was the Irish green, and there was white for everything else. Not that it mattered. <laughs> hmm? On the pink side, we're English. Covetous. We're conniving. We're lusty. Hmm? We're smug. We're intolerant. On the Irish side, we're guilty for having anything at all and giving it away. <laughs> and on the white side, we're confused. <laughs> yes, and like our Irish cousins who shrugged off the Celtic tiger in 10 short years, we went one step better and doffed it in the eight years of, of Danny's reign. Yes, and perhaps 
that there's a fitting emblem for us, the pink, the white, and the green. Hmm? Maybe that's the right emblem for us, the pink, the white, and the green. The have, the confused, the have not. The needle going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and never stopping in the middle. Have confused, give it all away. Confused, have confused, give it all away. Confused, that's us. <laughs> Isn't it? That's us. Have confused, have not. Confused, have confused, have not. The pink, the white, and the green. <laughs> yes. And truly, paradoxical it is, ladies and gentlemen, dear brethren and sisters, that we are truly only ever happy when we are in the red, such as Apiotus, the word of the lurid. Amen. <laughs>